On an 8-minute scenic helicopter flight over the Tasman Delta, we flew 500 meters above the valley floor. I have to say, the views from the helicopter were stunning and adrenaline was pumping by the time we landed on the mountain. Our guide was incredibly informative and took us on a leisurely 3-hour walk past mountain tans, native bush and some of the best scenery you can imagine. While it was a 3-hour walk, it was downhill and it was definitely a lot easier than I imagined and this is an activity where most people would be able to take part in. Hi guys, we've just landed here on the high mountains and that direction when I'm pointing, that's Mount Cook. And currently I'm standing approximately about 1,050 meters above sea level. And Glantana Park, which is in that direction there, it is approximately about 500 meters above sea level. It has 6,000 merino sheep farm over 10,000 acres of land. As we're hiking towards Glantana Station, I come across these berries growing on the side of the footpath and these are known as snowberries and they're edible. So I tried a few of them. They're really sweet and juicy and crunchy as well. Fight for an hour and we want to stop here because it is a vintage point and there's so much to show you. Now I'm going to hand this over to Matt who's going to tell you a bit about this awesome location. So where we're standing right now is on the moraine wall of an old ancient glacier from about 14,000 years ago in the last ice age. The lake was the old terminal lake. The valley floor is actually about another 250 or 300 meters lower than what we can see here. And as the glacier receded, all of the rivers have just brought down old sediments from the mountains at the top of the valley and just flattened out the valley here. And then the wind has kind of made it the, the, the real flat area that we can see. The sun is out and it's great to see the mountains, the blue skies. And I'm only about 500 meters away from the hut where I'll meet with Ross. Can't wait to meet the man who runs Glantana Park. The New Zealand government would build a number of huts just like the one behind me back in the 1950s. And the main reason for this was for academics to serve as their primary residence and where they could undertake research on the impact of weather, soil, but also animal as the impact on this land. So between 1965 and 1975, Dr. Tony Archer, his wife and two kids used to live in this hut. It is so cool. Going into the hut is like going into a time capsule. Now I'm going to take you through the hut and let's go check it out. So the cutlery and utensils that you see, they are pretty much used by Dr. Archer and his family and they are currently retained here for use by guests during the high country hike. So this hut itself would be no larger than 30 square meters but as you can see, that was all the space that they needed. And I just think how fortunate we are to get properties that are significantly larger but the honest truth is that properties of this size more is a functional purpose. And this was where mum and dad would be sleeping and the drawers and the mattress above the drawers and the kids would live upstairs. Gosh, zoom in here. 1976. Right behind me, there's a massive rock. And I was told that this rock was part of the glaciers and when it melted 14,000 years ago, so it's been sitting there for a long, long time. The Glantana homestead used to be at Boundary Stream, which is halfway down the lake. And then in 1950, they raised Lake Pukaki for hydro storage for the first time. And then in the 1970s, they built a much bigger earth dam behind there for the present Lake Pukaki, so it's the second time it was raised for hydroelectricity. And this lake out here with its beautiful colours is actually 50% of New Zealand's storage capacity, so that means it's approximately 50% of our renewable energy storage, so it's really important nationally. 
So Ross, you've been farming on this land for 65 years. Well, not that long because um, you're only one year old then, but you have lived on this land for 65 years. So um, tell me a bit about this farm. How many merino sheep would you, do you have on this farm? Well, first of all, it's a privilege to live in such a beautiful place. It's quite extraordinarily beautiful. We do tourism business as well as sheep farming because of the locality. So we have 6,000 merino sheep. And shortly we're going to be seeing the male sheep. There's only about 60. So they're lucky boys. Yes, and they service 6,000. So it's one boy to 1,000. Not quite, because Not quite. Half, of the, half of the sheep are boys. Right. Yeah, so they're called weathers. Yes. And they're just grown for their icebreaker wool. Right. So the wool's clipped off and made into woolen garments. Mm -hmm. Because it's merino wool, it's really good to wear. Keeps you cool, even on a hot day like today. And because the wool is fine, so it fills up any of the gaps that's in the fabric and keeps you nice and warm as well. Yeah, it does. Sit down, Jess. Sit down, Jess. Sit down, Jess. Sit down, Jess. So, Ross, you have been farming your whole life. When do you first start shearing? Share the sheep? Yes. So, generally, the farmers don't share the sheep. No. We have people that do that for contract their, shares. Yeah, for their way of life. And they're very quick. They can normally share 200 sheep in one eight hour day. So, of the 6,000 sheep, we end up doing about 100 ourselves. And that's quite enjoyable. When I got up this morning, knowing that I'll be heading up the high country mountains on a helicopter, I wasn't sure what to expect. But I have to say, every single moment was worth it and the views were absolutely amazing. Right now, I'm heading towards high country salmon where I'll be fishing for a salmon. And if I'm fortunate enough, there's the possibility that I'll get sashimi and I'll be able to taste fresh sashimi as is. So come on with me as we head towards high country salmon. Having spent the past two days at Glen Tanner, it is as much a tourism destination as it is a high country farm. With a range of modern accommodation offerings, located literally next to Lake Bukaki, visitors of all ages can truly connect with nature. This, in my opinion, is where you spend quality time with loved ones and good mates.